My name is Johnny, I'm studying business management and today I'm going to give you a presentation on the sport of tennis. The historical development of tennis dates back several thousands of years, so people who are involved in historical researches of this great sport claim to have found evidence of playing tennis in ancient culture. The history of tennis game was developed from a 12th century French football game called Palm, the game of Palm. In this game, the ball was struck with the hand, and sometime palm game produced handball, which was called joie de palm, which was called game of, in English, which is game of the palm of the palm. And there were used rackets. The game was first created by European monks for entertainment roles during ceremonial occasions. At first, the ball was hit with hands. Later, the leather glove came into existence. The leather glove was replaced with an adaptive handle for effective hitting and serving of the ball. That was a birth of tennis racket. The game became very popular, especially in France, where it, has, where it was adopted by the royal family. In the year of 1316, French King Louis dies after a hard game of Game of the Palm. Other terms of this stage of game are royal tennis in Great Britain, royal tennis in Australia, court tennis in the United States. But this death does nothing to damp the popularity of the recreation. There are seven different ways, as seen, in which a sport can be phased, and these are explained on the slide. First, you have the foundation, which is the history and beginning of the sport. Then, the codification of the sport, which is the formalization of the practice. Then, the stratification, where the body is responsible of the codification of the sport, which sets up or administers through the merger of a variety of leagues. After this is a professionali professionalization, where the sport gains popular appeal. Spectators pay to come and watch, and the willingness of investors begin to unfold. Then there is professionalization, where the other leagues come into action and the sport expands. After this comes commercialization, whereas the sport develops, external organizations see the opportunity of using the sport for their own purposes, typically marketing in the form of sponsorship. And finally, there is post-commercialization, a stage where the sport is both evolutionary and revolutionary, a period of stability and growth following the commercialization phase, but because major revenues derive from outside the sport, sudden dramatic change may be thrust upon the sport since the sport has a reduced level of control and steadiness and predictability of its income. Tennis has always been something of a fashion show. It began in the 1930s when Frenchman Ren Lacoste promoted his brand of sports, of sports shirts by, by sporting the Lacoste Crocodile logo on court. Now tennis fashion is a multi-million pound industry, but specialist equipment does not have to be expensive. All you need is a racket, balls and trainers. You could spend anything up to £800 on a full outfit and racket, but you can pick it up a full kit including a racket for as little as £50. But the racket may be the one piece of equipment worth spending a little bit more money on. As the world governing body of tennis, the International Tennis Federation, ITF, is responsible for overseeing the uniformity of the sport and publishes various, various annual rule books for this purpose. Tennis can be seen in almost every country and territory around the world and it attracts global television audiences and, it, and is available on almost every sport channel in the UK as well as BBC and ITV. Funds generated by the championships, less tax, are used by the LTA, which is the Lawn Tennis Association. To develop tennis is great in Great Britain, as well as this in December 2008. The club and the LTA agreed that the LTA to benefit from, is to benefit from receiving 90% of any distributable financial surplus resulting from the championships until at least 2053. AELTC, who are own subsidiary of All England Lawn Tennis Club Limited, to acquire the LTA's 50% share of ownership is All England Lawn Tennis Ground PLC. 
the company which owns Wimbledon tennis sites and facilities. Capital will therefore become free up until 2013 for the LTA to invest in British tennis and its facilities at all levels. For AELTC, who originally gave this 50% shareholding to the LTA in 1934, the transaction returns to the club full ownership and control of the site, enabling it to continue its central objective to maintain the championship as the premier tennis event in the world, with, with facilities to match. Thank you for listening to my presentation on the sport of tennis.